Hey guys, welcome to another Zebra tutorial. Um, last week we talked about the Geomorph and the Spectromorph options. This week we're going to talk about the GeoBlend and the uh, SpectroBlend windows inside the uh, oscillator panel. First, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out ADSRsounds.com and also zebratutorials.com for a lot of sounds. And um, what I want to do first is explain these knobs, the normalize and the resolution, because we haven't gone over those yet. Um, and to start with the normalize, the normalize it means that when you draw uh, draw some waves here, and you're gonna draw some waves in the other window, because remember we've got 16 windows here, and now we can hold Command and then um, click on the last one, and it's gonna morph slowly to the other wave that we've drawn. So if I would have start in the in the first slot here and I draw something random and I click in the last one and I draw something random like this. Now I can click on the first one again and hold command and then click on the last one and then it morphs the waves. So it slowly changes to the other wave and we can also do that with the wave knob because this one we can modulate. So now, for example, if we set an LFO here, it's going to morph between the waves. And you can see that here in the oscilloscope. And the normalize uh, knob is there to um, normalize the levels of all the waves. And normally you won't set it very high because that can be a little bit dangerous and you can get high peaks but at a hundred percent it would mean that the that the level is always going to be at zero db then next to that we have the resolution knob and the resolution knob is a little bit tricky but it has to do with the amount of calculations that zebra does and when you turn it all the way to the left it has a setting of one and that means that zebra is going to calculate the waveform every four seconds and um, in theory when you s would start to modulate this um, it would sound less smooth because it's not going to calculate the wave as often but the manual says that while in theory that is true it actually can sound smoother with a, with a lower resolution um, the only downside being that when you start to do some heavy modulation that you can get some unwanted effects and little sounds and distortion and stuff like that and this setting all the way to the left is also very um, efficient on your CPU because it doesn't have to do so much calculation and um, when you set it all the way to the right, it's gonna do a lot of calculations and it's gonna it's gonna calculate the waveform um, well almost the whole time. So uh, for this one, uh, a default setting of five is in, in most cases the best. And then we have the, this setting. We can choose between soft and crisp. Um, this one is also recommended to set on soft, and you can use crisp if you need really really bright uh, spiky waves. And this just has to do with the brightness and crisp makes it brighter and the the downside of that is that it can be it can be too high and too spiky and too loud so um i would I always keep this on soft, but you can experiment with it all right, so let's look into the uh geo blend mode um first of the geo blend and the um spectral blend are both very similar to the geomorph and the spectromorph. And remember that in Geomorph we can draw our waveform, and it will look like the waveform that we that we uh, that we've drawn. So I'm not gonna morph this for now. And you can see here in the oscilloscope that it pretty much looks like um, what I'm doing here. And the same is true in uh, Geo Blend mode. Here we draw the waveform the way uh, we want it to look square for example and the main difference here is of course the drawing mode because we can uh, be uh, a lot more precise um, but the other difference is that when you uh, morph it in geo blend mode it that's why the name is blend it will blend the waveforms more than it does morph the waveform 
um, you have to experiment with this to um, to hear what it sounds like but if I have uh, a few different waves here and I start to modulate um, the wave knob with an LFO now it will blend the waves and in geomorph it will well it will more it will sound more like it's gonna it's gonna morph the wave so so that is the the big difference there it doesn't really change them slowly in geo blend mode it's just at a certain point it blends them all together and that can be um, that can be very useful and the other useful thing about this is that um, we have a few quick uh, drawing tools for example we can hold option I believe yes option and then we can draw and then we can draw straight lines like this and it can be pretty useful if you want for example a square wave and we can hold command and then we're gonna um, erase it all down to zero and we still have our right click options here so that is why I really like to use um, this mode. It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit easier to use, and um, you can also be more precise because you're not limited to your uh, 32 dots, like in, in in Geomorph. You have to make new dots, new points, and you have 32 of them, which is quite a lot. But still, here you can do pretty much uh, whatever you want. And then the spectral blend, it's gonna look the same but um, now it doesn't draw the, the waveform but just like in the uh, spectral morph window it draws the harmonics and we have a more limited amount of harmonics here because in uh, spectral morph we um, pretty much have, have all harmonics available and in um, spectral blend it's gonna be a range of six octaves so now when I do this, I would have drawn all harmonics and I would get, I think, a very bright sound wave. If it's not morphing. It sounds like that. And if I do the same in spectral morph, um, I'm gonna remove this. Select these points and then right click and then linear. And I can remove this one so this is the difference in sound spectral blend is a little bit duller and less bright than a spectral morph but I think it's um, way easier to use for example if you want to um, draw just one sine wave in a spectral morph can be a little bit tricky because you have to draw one harmonic now because a sine wave only has one harmonic and it's the fundamental so I can try that and I would probably do something like this and make it very narrow insert a new point here and now I got a sine wave but it's it's a pretty messy and it's a I don't like to work like that and in, in spectral blend we can just click here and we have our one harmonic and we have a perfect sine wave and we can make it a bit higher but oh, it's a little bit too high so now let's draw something here we got a lot of stuff here and we have our sine wave here let's make a little bit more and these this this option is very nice for um, for ambient sounds I really like that because it sounds very very clean when you when you work like this I'm gonna erase all these. I'm gonna click there 
and there and then uh, morph them so it morphs them down to zero and then here I'm gonna make it a little bit different and then I'm gonna morph them again and now when we scroll through the waves it's gonna do this So that is a pretty nice thing to use. And what you also should notice is that in this mode we have this line in the center and in the spectrum morph mode we have just this line at the bottom. Um, what that means for us is that we can actually uh, precisely draw in the face of the waveform so um, the polarity so I can also draw it down like this which gives for a, a totally different sound So whenever I draw something in the lower half here, I'm drawing in anti-phase. So that means that it's going to be the same waveform, with, but with a, a opposite face. And if we try that, we can draw one here. You can see now that the waveform starts to uh, cancel each, each other out right here and then it's gonna look uh, pretty flat and there's a great preset to um, demonstrate that. It's called Bell's Flipper. I think this one is pretty loud. Here you hear the difference in sound, sound between phase and anti-phase. If I set this to the middle, it almost cancels each other out. It's very nice and we can modulate that with a slow LFO maybe. Set it to one two sign. Uh, so definitely I uh, work with that uh, when you have a free afternoon and try to uh, come up with new ways and new ideas and I think next week I'm gonna give you some practical examples of all this um, theory from the last two weeks so until then practice with this and uh, have fun and I think you really like these two modes so see you next week thanks for watching